Please hit that thumbs up while you all are coming in. Leave a thank you. cats and kittens how's everyone doing so um this is going to be a very quick live a very quick live but someone just sent this to me and this is really interesting if it's true now i want to be very clear in this i have no idea i have no idea if this is true but it's interesting if it is if it is uh, so someone sent me this thing this video not this thing this video from tt and i want to play it for you because it's interesting i want to give credit to the creator chime in to the number two crime uh link is in the description by the way oh okay all right chime in to crime has everyone hit that thumbs up button yet what is tt TikTok. TikTok. go ahead and hit that thumbs up for me all right So, again, it's going to be a very quick live. I was going to do a video, and I thought, yeah, we'll just do a live real quick. 
Oops, wrong one. Wrong one. Bear with me one moment, please. All right. Again, warning. The following. Sorry, wrong one. Wrong one again. Where is it at? I don't want the overlay. There we go. I want the thing off my head. Okay. So I've not been able to verify this, uh, what this creator is saying, but again, if this is true, it's very interesting. Here we go. We are now on day 48 of missing Sebastian Rogers with little to no leads in this case. We do know that Chris Proudfoot's stepfather is back at work working at St. Jude's in Memphis, staying at Horn Lake Yogi Bear, him and Katie. We know that, right? I was the first one that said that, hey, Chris isn't there, or he moved all the way in the back of somewhere. So we do know that part. This week, we know that they were staying more towards the front. The campground moved him to the back. Thomas popped into the comments last night and said, I am working at St. Jude's. CP was operating the crane for us February 26th, which was that Monday morning that Sebastian was reported missing. Okay. So this person that works allegedly named Thomas that works with Chris allegedly popped in her TikTok, I'm assuming, and said Chris was working on February 26th, the morning of Sebastian went missing. Just wait. I had issues with his performance and his attitude and demeanor all morning so bad that I requested him to be removed. Thomas allegedly had. How could he work knowing he was gone? How could he work knowing he was gone? Well, you know, I'm thinking, you know, morning like before six that's the thing i'm thinking but chris allegedly was in such a bad mood and his performance that requested for him to be moved yes yeah katie called him but he's supposed to be at work right I requested him to be removed from the crane. By 10 or 11, he was replaced and he stormed off the job site. We started that morning at 7 a.m. He goes on to say, Okay, okay. I didn't hear that part. Okay, so 10 or 11 a.m. When did... Hmm say that Chris is back at work, still working at St. Jude's Memphis, but on the night shift. The day Sebastian went missing, Chris was working on the day shift, and prior to that, he was working on the day shift. Now he's moved. Now we know that he's moved to the night shift. He says that he's seen his truck yesterday when he was leaving work. So this gives us a little insight to how Chris was acting that morning that Sebastian went missing. What do y'all think? Love you too, Miranda. What time did Seth do the three-way call? It had to be, well, the three-way call went in at 6.20. 6.20 a.m. Let me see her other content. This creator, chime into crime. Okay, she's got a small channel. Oh, I can't do that. Okay, what is it? I am working at St. Jude's. Chris Proudfoot was operating the crane on February 26th. I had issues. 
Chris Proudfoot up all night went to work with no sleep in my opinion. I was think I was kind of thinking that Shannon. I was thinking maybe he was up all night. Up all night. He had to be back at work at seven o'clock. I think he left at three ish. Hey, Poppy. It was said Chris returned to Hendersonville around one. Yes. And if it was 11, I mean, it's been 45 days, people's memory can, you know, but 12, one. If he left it, if he left at 11, that'd be like 2.30. I've been thinking about this. I've been thinking about this. Chris said he had two earphones. Yes. One on the crew and the other one with Katie. He wasn't working at 6 a.m. when she called him. Lie. Yeah. Well, he, according to this person, he was on the job at 7 a.m. If he left the Tim, then that would put him there at one. Yeah. This one's a this one's a hard one to figure out, y'all. It was a Sunday night when the PH I don't know what PH means till midnight. Chris had enough time to drive and take Sebastian and time to drive back to work. So Chris went on to work seven according to this guy but the guy says he left around 11 too which is impossible if he was there by one or 1 30 rather didn't leave work till about 11 seven he knew sebastian was missing i just don't see how if he if he wasn't involved in this whatsoever, I can't imagine a stepdad getting a calling the cops. Okay, so think about this for a second. He would have to, they, he called the cops at 6.20 in the morning. So while he's calling the cops, he's going into work at the same time. You get what I mean? Because if he if he went to work at 7 a.m., the call, the 911 call was at 620. He would have called 911 and then went into work. I can't imagine him calling 911 at 620 and then going into work. I just can't unless it's for an you know, like an alibi. Otherwise, you would have called your boss and said, hey, I know I'm supposed to be there in 40 minutes, but my stepson is missing. Do you get what I mean? Right, before work. That doesn't, it doesn't make sense. The only way, in my opinion, he would go in at work is if, he wanted to be there as an alibi. But it doesn't make sense to me that he stayed. Well, it doesn't make sense that he would go into work. Right? You get what I'm saying? All right. Let me... We're going to have class here briefly. I want to show you something. We're going to have class. This is 
off the cuff right now, so you'll have to bear with me because I wasn't planning on doing this. While I pull this up. All right. Guys, do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up button. I would greatly, greatly appreciate this. All right. Let me make myself smaller. Smaller. There we go. Okay. All right. So, so you guys, it's rather than me just saying it, let me show it to you. So, Chris on three way phone call with Katie calls at six. Six twenty a.m. Okay, but in this video that we're listening to, what's the guy's name? Let me find the guy's name. Thomas. Thomas says, Chris shows up at work at 7 a.m. Now the question is, why would Chris go to... Oh my God. Turn this down one second. Why would Chris go into work if No, if his stepson stepson is one word, I'm pretty sure. Stepson is already missing. You get what I mean? He said he called from the crane. He was in the crane when Katie called him. Okay. So if that is true, either Thomas is lying or Chris is lying. Or they're both lying. Teddy Bear, thank you so much. Three-hour trip and three-hour phone call. It makes you think. Bingo, Teddy. Bingo. Sweet Pea, thank you so much for becoming a member. You're now a pearl. Thank you. I appreciate you. Makes sense why his mood is off? Well, yes, definitely. It's the same time zone. Yes, it is same time zone. Yes, he said he was at work when Katie called him. Yes, he, yeah. He said he couldn't just leave. He had to wait for someone to come in. Right? Who is Thomas? Thomas is allegedly this creator that got in touch with this. When this TikToker, I don't know if it was her chat or someone's chat. Um, I thought Chris went directly to the boss to ask for a leave from work. This is saying that he didn't ask to leave, was still operating the crane, and they have to tell you he was forced to leave. Very odd. So, um, this is, yeah, it's a TikToker. Here, I'm going to play the video again. I'm going to play this video again. 
Again, credit goes to Chime. We are now on day 48 of missing Sebastian Rogers with little to no leads in this case. We do know that Chris Proudfoot's stepfather is back at work working at St. Jude's in Memphis, staying at Horn Lake Yogi Bear, him and Katie. This week, we know that they were staying more towards the front. The campground moved him to the back. Thomas popped into the comments last night and said, I am working at St. Jude's. CP was operating the crane for us February 26th, which was that Monday morning that Sebastian was reported missing. I had issues with his performance and his attitude and demeanor all morning so bad that I requested him to be removed. I requested him to be removed from the crane. By 10 or 11, he was replaced and he stormed off the job site. We started that morning at 7 a.m. He goes on to say that Chris is back at work, still working at St. Jude's Memphis, but on the night shift. The day Sebastian went missing, Chris was working on the day shift, and prior to that, he was working on the day shift. Now he's moved. Now we know that he's moved to the night shift. He says that he's seen his truck yesterday. Oh, okay. He storms off the job site between 10 and 11. Between 10 and 11. That would make sense. 10 would make sense. When he was. It said, I requested him to be moved from the crane by 10 or 11 a.m. He was replaced and he stormed off the job site. We start work at 7 a.m. So what I think happened, uh, thank you, the five uh, Canes Cane. CP was working at 6 a.m. Dispatch at 6.33. Chris said he was working at 6 uh, a.m. Yes, dispatch is at 6.03. Chris didn't work the 25th OSHA violation, too. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily an OSHA violation. Um, if, you know, it, it depends on their licensing and how, if it's approved. Um where exactly is it if it's near residential all of that i would like does is there anyone in memphis right now that could check to see if they work on a sunday i would love to know that like uh little miss sunshine thank you baby appreciate you um he was around hendersonville area all night so he went to work at 7 a.m. Look at the work hours. Yeah, yeah. Pink Butterfly, I, I found that, uh, and we pulled it up, but, you know, hospitals can, you know, it, it's, this is St. Jude, right? So they're a nonprofit. Um Chris was thinking about using it in his alibi. Well, I think he was probably very tired. Probably very, very tired. In my opinion. But 7 a.m. does not make sense to me unless he wanted to use this as an alibi. If Chris says he was there at 6 o'clock, well... 620, 630 is when the call goes in to 911, which is about 30. Uh, hold on, I was just thinking something. He was probably very, very tired if he was already in Hendersonville. Maybe he wanted to be on that job site while that 911 call was going in. Check text. Hey, love, look who was just live on. Uh... Who's hold on? Hold 
Hold on, guys. Let me see here. But well, that's interesting. Um, replying to someone. Oh. Katie Proudfoot was just on a channel, not like a not a YouTube channel, but on television. And God, she's well, it's not gonna let me zoom in anymore. Here you go. The crane should not have been operating before ADM. I was just thinking, I think he may have wanted to have been at that job site when that 911 call was going in or about to go in. My son just finished working at St. Jude, no weekend work. You're 100% sure. Like, what was he doing, though? Was he doing construction? I'm just, I'm going to call St. Jude. I'm going to be like, y'all do weekend work. I don't want to bother him, but... She looks really... Apparently, Chris is not at the house right now. This was just a little bit ago. It's a bad mood acting up. I, I donate to St. Jude every month. I've donated to St. Jude every month for... Well over a decade. 307, please. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Construction hours as permitted by the jurisdiction in which the project is located. Construction hours from projects located in the city of Memphis will comply with ordinance number 5660, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Saturday. Construction prohibited on Sundays. Which he wasn't there Sunday. We're talking about Monday. We got to remember that. We keep thinking it's Sunday, but it's Monday. We all keep thinking it's Sunday, but it's Monday. Uh, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. But... No nighttime work allowed. But he had Sunday off to run around. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, that's right. But he wasn't actually working till seven on Monday. Yeah, yeah. Now he now this guy from this TikTok he says that Chris showed up at 7 a.m. Yes, he did the piping and they are very strict out there no weekend work. Well, it says you can work on Saturdays. But they probably don't work on Saturdays, but. Oh, he would definitely not been working Sunday night. Absolutely not. He, there's no way in hell he would have been working Sunday night. No chance. 
it's not even disputable. I don't think at this point that, I mean, who, who works Sunday night? Like construction at a hospital. He's allegedly working nights now, St. Jude. No, it's not a state job. It's not a state job. No. What do you mean look up HIPAA? HIPAA has nothing to do with it. Where was Miss Browerfeet on the news? Why was Miss She was Kimberly? Why is the night shift if they have to stop? That's a point. That's a point. Yes. What is the night shift if they have to stop at 6 p.m.? Thomas is lying. Thomas is lying or they have special permission. If you want to know what he said, you have to just rewind a few minutes. Hmm. If you want to know who Thomas is, just rewind. I played a video. Here, I'll play it again. I'll just play it again. One second. We are now on day 48 of missing Sebastian Rogers with little to no leads in this case. We do know that Chris Proudfoot's stepfather is back at work working at St. Jude's in Memphis, staying at Horn Lake Yogi Bear, him and Katie. This week, we know that they were staying more towards the front. The campground moved him to the back. Thomas popped into the comments last night and said, I am working at St. Jude's. CP was operating the crane for us February 26th, which was that Monday morning that Sebastian was reported missing. I had issues with his performance and his attitude and demeanor all morning so bad that I requested him to be removed. I requested him to be removed from the crane. By 10 or 11, he was replaced and he stormed off the job site. We started that morning at 7 a.m. He goes on to say that Chris is back at work, still working at St. Jude's Memphis, but on the night shift. The day Sebastian went missing, Chris was working on the day shift. Okay. Amy, you're, yes. I, I forgot about that. She says, I work at a nonprofit hospital. All hired constructions have to stop by 4 p.m. and no weekends. This is a BS patient issue. Yes. Because they don't want to disturb the patients at night of the evening. They don't feel good, obviously, and you don't want to keep them up. I was thinking that, too. Is Thomas Chris? Is Thomas Chris? Hmm. One second. Okay. The picture that is circling with KP and Sebastian at dinner is not a picture from the night. No. No, it's an old picture. That might be a state thing because at St. Bernard's, when they built the new ACU tower, they worked seven days a week, 24 hours a day at the See, it just depends, I guess. I researched this job and Chris, and he is lying. Hmm. Uh, 
Um, I'll tell you who that was through. It was a channel called a TV channel. When I say channel, by the way. One second. Reels on Patrol, R E E L Z on Patrol is what the person said. On Patrol is a TV show. They shared Sebastian last weekend and this weekend. This person says, she said the whole Bubba thing, but not no Chris. I thought interesting, she says. Hmm. Weird. Oh, yes, Danny Marley Thomas St. Jesus. Yeah, his name was Thomas. Or last name Thomas. I emailed you last night after live just something I hadn't seen anyone speak on. Okay. I'll look at that. When did they move? Because it's 7 p.m. tonight. They were still at the same spot they've been. Uh, they moved a couple days ago. Unless they moved them back. So he talked to Katie and reported Sebastian missing at 630. Has anyone been to the job site to recently see him working? No. But Reels is a cable network. I don't know, guys. I mean, it's so frustrating. It's like you can't get a freaking... Is, is there anyone in Memphis, please, is there anyone in Memphis that can go to St. Jude and walk up to the construction and say, hey, do y'all work? What What are you... Do y'all work like 24 hours a day here? What time do you... What, like, what days do y'all work? Please. So we can get a straight answer. Thank you, Jules. Let me help you out with that, Shirley. One second. Um, Sumner County. What does that mean, Sumner County hours? I don't get it. What what did they say? So this Thomas is either lying or it's Chris. <laughs> It's got to be, right, ATS? Read Snow's comment. What stores are close by? We can call. Oh, that's a good idea, Snow. I don't know if there's anything close by. Let's go to Google Earth. Let's see what's up. Saint Jude, Memphis. Okay. 
Paris St. Jude's Hospital. And damn it, there's nothing that's... I'm pretty sure this... Let's look here. One second. Okay. Yeah, this is St. Jude's. Okay. Now. What part are they supposedly working on? Does anyone know? Let's go back here. Let's go right here. Oh, damn, this is old. Does anyone know what they're working on there? I mean, look. Yeah, no one call. No one call St. Jude. Absolutely not. Did JLR say anything? St. Jude on public sidewalk and were. Chris said Vanderbilt Hospital St. Jude Project. Hmm, let me look at this. Vanderbilt. Let's see here. So it might be at the Vanderbilt University Medical Center. All right, let's look at this. Now the Vanderbilt, that's in Nashville. Okay, Vanderbilt Children's Hospital. Okay, that's Nashville too. We need Memphis. Vanderbilt St. Jude. A leading children's hospital, St. Jude treats 262 Danny Thomas Place. I guess it's got to be that. Not vent. Yeah, I know, but it, it's like, can you tell Justin when he's done? They have who? Uh, oh, oh, they do on X. Let's see here. Here we go. Y'all want to see Katie Proudfoot's new interview? Just dropped 11 seconds ago. Thank you so much, ATS. Find a missing Tennessee teenager. During the early morning hours of February 26, 2024, 15-year-old Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers disappeared from his home in Hendersonville, Tennessee. That's about 20 miles north of Nashville. He's not been seen or heard from since. And Sebastian is now the subject of an Amber Alert. Joining us now is Sebastian's mom, Katie Proudfoot. Katie, thanks for being with us under what must be very difficult circumstances. First of all, 
How are you and your family holding up? Um, I would say that this isn't a tragedy that we would wish anyone to ever experience. Uh, we are, we're keeping our faith and we're praying every day that we're going to find Sebastian. What's the latest on the search? So law enforcement is exploring any and all possibilities. Um, they're communicating daily with us about updates and the statuses. We, we have faith that all the law enforcement agencies involved are doing everything that they can. Um, and we're going to find Sebastian and bring him home. We know the most important thing right now is to get the word out about Sebastian. What would you like our viewers to know about your son? Uh, Sebastian, he is high functioning autistic. Um, he loves animals. He loves video games. He loves fishing. Green tea. You're so goofy. <laughs> He's typically a very, very sweet boy. Um, he can be quite temperamental though if he's overstimulated or if he's stressed out. He has a unique run. He runs like the, the Naruto anime character. Uh, when, he's, when he's excited, he likes to, to dab and he loves music. He loves to dance. That's all very helpful information. Now, if Sebastian is out there watching, what would you like to say to your son? I would say, Bubba, we love you. We all love you so much. Um, wherever you are, just know that we are not going to stop. We're going to keep searching. We're going to find you. We're going to bring you home. And if you, you ever get an opportunity, find a phone, find a safe adult, call 911. Um, but I'd also like to, to ask our community to please, please, please keep searching your properties. Keep sharing his flyer. Um, if you know something or you see something, please say something. Call the law enforcement immediately. We're going to do everything we can to help find him. Thank you. Now, let's take a good look at Sebastian. He's 15 years old, 5'5", five five, 120 pounds, with light brown hair and brown eyes and wears glasses. If you've seen Sebastian or know anything about his disappearance, please call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST. That's 1-800-843-5678. And you can also reach out to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. What do y'all think? Damn it, she drove it. She seems more in her head a little bit more now. Um, yeah, she's at home. I smell divorce. Um, Seth gets no info daily. Well, she doesn't really get it. I mean, I think they... Uh, I don't, I mean, nobody gets any updates. Really. Katie Proudfoot. Katie, thanks for being with us under what must be very difficult circumstances. First of all, how are you and your family holding up? Um, I would say that this isn't a tragedy that we would wish anyone to ever experience. Uh, we are... We're keeping our faith and we're praying every day that we're going to find Sebastian. What's the latest on the search? So law enforcement is exploring any and all possibilities. Um, they're communicating daily with us about updates and the statuses. We, we have faith that all the law enforcement. Oh, okay. We, we have faith in possibilities. Um, they're communicating daily with us about updates and the statuses. But updates in the statuses. We, we have faith that all the law enforcement agencies involved are doing everything that they can. Um, and we're going to find Sebastian and bring him home. We know the most important thing right now is to get the word out about Sebastian. What would you like? The, um, listen, there is not a chance in hell this kid walked out barefooted by himself. There, it, Sorry. I don't believe I there I just don't believe it. 
Didn't she tell? Yeah, they just said TBI, no interviews, no more interviews. Thank you, Little Miss Sunshine. Thank you so much for becoming a member, Drew. Thank you so much, my dear. Appreciate you. You guys are now pearls. How? Yeah. Look for your child. Do something. Um, there's just no way a child walked out in, in 26 degree weather and walked. Our viewers to know about your son. No. Uh, Sebastian, he is uh, high functioning autistic. Um, he loves animals. He loves video games. He loves fishing. Green tea. You're so goofy. <laughs> He's typically a very, very sweet boy. Um, he can be quite temperamental, though, if he's overstimulated or if he's stressed out. He has a unique run. He runs like the, the Naruto anime character. Uh, when he's when he's excited, he likes to, to dab and he loves music. He loves to dance. That's all very helpful information. Now, if Sebastian is out there watching, what would you like to say to your son? I would say, Bubba, we love you. We all love you so much. Um, wherever you are, just know that we are not going to stop. We're going to keep searching. We're going to find you. We're going to. I think she's crying because she's because of the situation, maybe for herself. And I think she genuinely misses Sebastian, in my opinion. Bring you home. But something happened um, and if you opinion. you ever get an opportunity Charlene, phone, welcome thank you babe. safe adult call 911 um yeah, but i'd also like to to ask our community to please 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 keep searching your properties keep sharing his flyer um if you know something or you see something please say something call the law enforcement immediately we're going to do everything we can to help find him. Thank you. Now. Weren't they communicating with Seth? I mean. I don't know. I think. Um, you know, they may want to. Uh, They may want to make Chris and Katie feel very comfortable. Why now, Katie? So Chris stayed behind. It does sound like he is working. So we need to find out if they work at night. If they work, like, for sure. She shows uneasiness around her mouth or contempt, I feel like. Well, Peter Hyatt did a, he's been doing, he's been just crushing it. Just such good information. We're going to go over a lot of that tomorrow. I have some things I want to say on that for sure. So he's able to smoke THC. I don't like that. Who's able to smoke THC? What do you mean? She had to get back to her B. <laughs> No, I don't want I don't want to call. No, I don't know but nobody needs to call St. Jude. We'll find out something else. That would be crazy to call St. Jude. Oh, you called? You called Bubble? For Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30 construction. No nights, the lady told me.
I guess this is the Reels interview. This is the Reels interview. Sent you another link. I can't believe how many cameras I've already had. Yes. Yeah, whatever you do, do not call St. Jude. You see it right here. Bubble Beth did, I guess, the other day. Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30. Which means Chris was off for the weekend. So, I'm going to say this Thomas guy is either lying or it's Chris and he's lying, in my opinion. Right? Thank you, Starflower Flint Construction. They are building two towers at St. Jude in Memphis. Flint Co. Thank you. What did Patricia stay? Oh, is that what she said? Hold on. Let's go back there. If I can slow it down. First of all, how are you and your family holding up? Um, I would say that this isn't a tragedy that we would wish anyone to ever experience. Tragedy. I mean, I guess it is a tragedy, but I, I would say this is... $1.9 billion project, two new towers at St. Jude. Damn. They paying attention to what YouTube is saying. Oh, yeah. Adapting, yep. Tragedy, no one should be experiencing missing child. Tragedy is harm. No, I've got her on slow speed. She's not she's not slurring. No baby kisses. That's a different that's a different Katie Proudfoot. She's not an MMA fighter. No. Linco. Let me look at this. Memphis. All right, let's look at this construction. Watch this. Look at this, y'all. Flinco, home of rock and roll, home of blues, soul, and rock and roll. Hard work. Results driven in every market we serve. Hospitality, health care, view projects. Damn, they're big. Yeah, these people are big, big, big. Oklahoma Heart Institute, St. Francis, 
Glenpool. I was trying to see if they got the St. Jude on here. St. You know what? We could probably pull the permit, the working permits, and it'll tell us what time they're permitted to work there. Hmm. Let's see here. Let me check something. See here. Six hundred and twenty five thousand square feet. Damn that they're building. Let's see here. I'm trying to see if I can find. Oh, look at this. This is an interesting photo. Earn a significant place in St. Pete's big construction project. Look at this crane. This is what Chris was talking about, being high in the air. See? Yeah, Amber, we just played it just a minute ago, hon. Thank you, Rach. Hmm. Trying to see. Yep, that's what Chris was talking about, being high in the air. That's interesting. Okay, let me see here. Um, Return with my business. The page isn't working. Okay. The hours of the St. Jude program has raised nearly three million. There was something. Through the hours of St. Jude fundraising drive. Huh. I mean, there should be something that's the hours. That's what I'm trying to find here. Let's see here. 
Okay. Oh, wait, nope, that wasn't it. June, Memphis. All right. I think I might have it. St. Jude announced earlier this week tensions to increase. It's five. It's got to be here somewhere. Sorry, guys. I want to find this. This is aggravating me. I want an answer. New patient houses. Let's see here. Announce mm. Wednesday. Destruction. Hours on Saint June. Investment for science. You would think they would have their hours to, during the construction. You know what I mean? You would think that. But I can't find nothing. If anybody. Yeah. Um, Luminous. That's a different one. If anybody has anything, you can text it to me. A permit is only allow them to build nothing else. That's what the city says, but I just want to see. I want to see. It says, I want St. Jude. I want it to have St. Jude on it. You know what I mean? I want Sebastian found one way or the other being around. There is a, I've got, there's a, another case. You can text me at, no calling right now, just text. Um, I bet there's a set amount of hours a crane operator is allowed to work, like truck drivers. Sure. Mm -hmm. I would say for sure. The police were driving around the camp site this morning. Mm. It was said he left work around 10 or 11, so maybe he left around 10. Well, I think he was off all weekend. I think this is this is my thought. This is honestly my thought. I think he was there at the house all weekend. 
all weekend. Shit hit the fan Sunday night. This is my theory. Only a theory. Shit hit the fan Sunday night. Something happened Sunday night. Chris leaves by 3 a.m. Everything is taken care of by 3 a.m. I think about 8 or 9 o'clock at night is when it happened. 8 to 9 o'clock. And then... Everything is taken care of by 3 a.m. He leaves at 3 a.m. to go to work. He's at work by 7 a.m. Monday morning. Well, he's in he's in Memphis. Hold on. He's in Memphis by 6.30, 6.20, 6.30. That is exactly the moment they're on three-way. Hold on. Do we ever stop what? Luna. Don't block them. Well, Black Skies, I hope you feel better. What's the issue with it? Tell me. Because I want you to poke holes in my theory. Like, I want you to. If there's, if, if there's a hole in it, poke a hole in it, because I we need to figure it out Sebastian wasn't seen since 6 p.m. he could have easily how's he on the phone from 9 to 12 tracking will show TBI I was just 9 to 12 Why it doesn't find the boy? You know why it doesn't find the boy is your comment either. So I'm just um they could have just exactly people set up there. Oh my god, they're making theories and everything. Well, you can't find someone if you don't know exactly what happened. I'm not a judge or jury. You don't like it? Swipe away. Move on out. Um... Still wonder why Secret Service called... There's devices to scrub data. Yes, there is devices. But, you know, who's going to have that? Now, I will say Katie did work for... Um, thank you, Erica. I, I Katie did work for military and, like, electronics and stuff. Uh... They say his mom's car was in the area like 545. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's just people who just like congregate together and they're like, oh, you know, I can't believe that they're, you know, Talking about 
Sebastian's uh, mother like that or stepdad or whatever. We're just talking about what they said. If you don't like it, you don't have to watch. I mean, it's really that simple. I don't watch people I don't care for. Really don't watch people I don't really care for. No more than 10 seconds. Well, the thing is, ATS, it's like, you know, at least I'm trying to do something. You know what I mean? I'm I'm trying. I'm going to go hand out a thousand flyers in Tennessee Friday for this little boy. What do you want? Like, I mean, just sitting up on a panel and moaning over creators, over other creators who you'll never meet. And if you if you care so if you care so much about it and you can do it better, then do it. Then do it. If you can do it better than I can, then do it, please. I'm not taking calls right now. I'm sorry. Um, really, fill in the gap. Um, you can get to Nashville to Memphis, vice versa, a half dozen ways I know of. You're it's okay, hair curlers. It's just amazing. Like I have everyone's allowed to have like you can have your opinion or whatever, but just like gossiping with each other about other creators and stuff like I don't have I just don't have time for that I don't do any of that bullshit I just do my thing and roll um I'm up for Seth they aren't updating him love you too Christy <laughs> cherry bomb thank you so much for becoming a member dear appreciate you thank you so much um, I don't know if I said Starflower. Thank you so much, my dear Flintstone Construction. I think I did. Yes, thank you so much, and thank you so much, Charlene. Appreciate you. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. You know what? Maybe we can call. I do me. I don't I don't even pay attention to anybody. Like I don't even people will send me, oh, this is this person's talking or whatever. And I'm like, swipe. Um I'm not worried. I'm not worried at all. Thank you again, Cherry Bomb. Um so, you know, this is, I know like it says it on paper, right, that that's the general consensus of what time most people, thank you, dear, I'm glad you found us a couple of weeks ago, appreciate you. Um, I'm. And people's like, well, why does it matter? Why does it matter where Chris was? Well, it kind of matters a lot. Why does it matter? Why does it matter he was at work or not? Well, because I want to know. Um, yes, do not call St. Jude. Do not never call St. Jude. Do not. Never, 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 ever, 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 ever call St. Jude. 
I'm not taking calls right now. I'm sorry. I was just taking text. I'm just taking text. Um, what I can do is I can, uh, I will find out at worst, at worst, when I am in the area, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to Tennessee specifically for this case. I'm going there for a conference and I'm at the conference, I'm going to be handing out a thousand flyers while I'm there. So, but I will find out when construction is at this specific location. I will find that out for sure. Um, because the, the I mean, you. I can call the city even if I need to, and ask them. I can pull. We can pull their permit. No, I'm not going to CrimeCon this year. I'm not going to CrimeCon this year. Um, but we can pull the the permit, and it'll it'll tell us. So, and then it's just, you know, if you can find information. And you've got a receipt, right? It's undisputed. You can't dispute it, right? Well, he's couldn't have been there on the weekend because we've got a receipt here that says they don't work on the weekends, which it's probably most likely it is exactly what the city ordinance says. But, you know, sometimes hospitals and, and things, it can be differently. We can call, I can call Flint Co. Yeah. Oh, half pint. That's sweet. Justin, you got my hubby looking for pit permits. This man never does research. Listen. I mean, listen to me. You know. I'll, you know, you guys know, like, my eye is side-eyed with Chris and Katie. But if there is a way, if there is a way that I can find that Chris was not there, they had nothing to do with it. You know what I mean? Like, if it makes them look you know, Chris looks better, whatever. The answers is the answers. You know, it's not going to change anything, but if we can find something that we, we're not going to just, you know, you can't dispute. Um, Did you get my text? I, oh my God, I, shit, I've got like 20 texts. Sorry. Uh, Luminous, yeah. I, I thought that at the very beginning as well. Uh, Justin, I watched your live. There was an interview with Chris and Katie right before Christmas. Christmas cough. She says we couldn't find our son that Monday morning. Yes. Yeah, well, we can look at that. I was planning on being here five minutes, y'all. Oh, my God. Hello, Justin. Did you see Maddie Soto's dad did an interview with WT, WFTV? I have not saw that yet. I will look into it, though. Thank you for that. Um, hello, I believe uh, Katie has been watched. Oh, I believe Katie has been watching Brandy Neal's interviews. Listen to her words. Brandy Neal is a wonderful mother. Katie knows exactly what happened to Sebastian, in my opinion. Interesting. Sent email with a couple construction videos. Thank you so much. I'll look at that. I just try this website. Thank you. Can you tell me what you think about these pictures? Okay. One second.
Um, I've been searching day and night about Sebastian Rogers. I found this. Someone please check it out. Look. Um yeah, the thing, uh, that's sweet, Emma. I love Emma. Hold on, let me do this. Let me fix this. She's been uh, looking at... So this is from Crime Stories Obsessed. Emma's one of the sweetest creators a person could meet, like ever know. If you have Emma as a friend on here, it's she's amazing. She's just amazing. If you haven't subscribed to Crime Stories Obsessed, I recommend Emma. Um, just a sweet, sweet soul. She says, I've been searching day and night for Sebastian Rogers. I found this. Sorry, my voice is going out, guys. Someone please check it out. Looks like a head with nose pounding up at the sky. Um, I don't know what this is, to be quite honest with you. But did you make it that, Angela? I hope you're okay. But you see, it's it's so highly unlikely that this video or this picture would have been taken. I just subscribed to her channel. Good. Thank you. Uh, it's highly unlikely that this picture would have been taken during the time she, you know, Sebastian would have been missing. But regardless, even if, you know, it has nothing to do with Sebastian, um, you know, it could be something else. It It's probably absolutely nothing at the end of the day, in my opinion. Um, but again, check it out, you know. They were talking about the 11-hour dispatch with the morning Sebastian disappearance. I said, yes. Weed growth is too long. Bingo. Yes. Yep. This is clearly a spring or summer picture, maybe like early fall, but this is not this is not February in Tennessee. It's not February in Tennessee. Right. So there is that. Um okay, here's another photo. What's this? Let me see this. To me, it looks like a, a maybe a shopping bag or something. It's so hard to. Maybe that's the wrong one. Let's try this one. What do y'all think? I don't think it's anything personally, but one second. Yeah, it's it's too grainy to tell for sure. He's been playing too much Pokemon, <laughs> Jesse. <laughs> I remember when, like, Pokemon first came out, like, people were, like, falling off of buildings and cliffs and everything. It's crazy. Um, Justin Trapp pulling up live street cams in area of construction. Great idea. Y'all are amazing. Y'all just think of... This is, you guys are amazing. Um, that is a wonderful idea. Try pulling up live street view cams in construction. Look, let me see this. Um, let 
Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Street. Hmm. Live look at our downtown high five. Action five. Well, this is not live. Mm -mm, that can't be live. There's not going to be any cameras on St. Jude. Um, what's this? Okay, yep. Yep, we just watched that moments ago. Hey, Justin, think about this. He's a crane operator. That's a serious job. No time for mistakes. So no way is he going to talk for Katie for hours with Katie on a night shift. Then that morning, he has his earpiece in or work when he was on the phone with Katie just saying. So the thing about this is, the thing about... the time if he is there if if he's supposed to show up at 7 a.m if he's supposed to show up at 7 a.m he gets he gets the call at well he calls 911 at 6 20 6 30 ish in the morning why would he go into work at seven o'clock if he is calling 911 at 620 or 630 because if i had to be at work at 6 or if i had to be work at 7 a.m. and 30 or 40 minutes before my shift a child in my house goes missing i don't have anything on my screen right now a child in my house goes missing. Do you think A, I'm going to work and B, I'm going to be running a crane? That's the only reason. That's the only reason I can think of, Cassie. That's it. It's okay, honey. I think it's possible he could have left at three. Okay, let's th let's think of this. All right, put on our thinking caps. Poke a hole in my theory. Poke a hole in my theory. I was telling you a theory earlier. All right. Well, I don't know. I might have already poked a hole in my theory. <laughs> he says they were talking for three hours. From 9 to 12. She was laying on the couch sleeping and all that. What if he was driving to her? Oh, Miss Kirby, I hope you feel better, honey. I messaged you back, praying for you. What if he left at nine o'clock 
that evening. They were talking for three hours. He gets there at midnight. From midnight to three, they have to do whatever they do. From midnight to three. He leaves at 3 a.m., is back in Memphis by 6.30 a.m., shows up at work at 7. 6.30 a.m., as soon as he drives, as soon as he arrives in Memphis, he calls 911 on a three-way call. On a three-way call. Or he leaves his phone. He leaves his phone. In Memphis. Drives all the way. Leaves at 9, 8.30, 9 o'clock. Drives all the way to Hendersonville. Gets there at midnight. From midnight to 3. They do whatever they do. Three o'clock, he leaves back to Memphis, gets back at 6.20, 6.30. That's as soon as he rolls into Memphis. That's when he calls. 911 on the three-way. Three-way has to be merged and is only incoming, not outgoing. And then 30 minutes later, he has to be at work at 7 o'clock. Chris is already in a bad mood. He's tired. He shows up at 7 o'clock. He already knows what's going on with Sebastian. And Katie, and then yeah, he's in a bad mood. He leaves at about ten o'clock that morning from work. Goes back to Hendersonville. He had a long day. Long day. <laughs> Very long day. Hey, y'all, I'm going to play this interview again. I need to go tinkle. OP Nation, tonight we need your help to find a missing Tennessee teenager. Oh, I need it. During the early morning hours of February 26, 2024, 15-year-old Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers disappeared from his home in Hendersonville, Tennessee. That's about 20 miles north of Nashville. He's not been seen or heard from since. And Sebastian is now the subject of an Amber Alert. Joining us now is Sebastian's mom, Katie Proudfoot. Katie, thanks for being with us under what must be very difficult circumstances. First of all, how are you and your family holding up? Um, I would say that this isn't a tragedy that we would wish anyone to ever experience. Uh, we are, we're keeping our faith and we're praying every day that we're going to find Sebastian. What's the latest on the search? So law enforcement is exploring any and all possibilities. Um, they're communicating daily with us about updates and the statuses. We, we have faith that all the law enforcement agencies involved are doing everything that they can, um, and we're going to find Sebastian and bring him home. We know the most important thing right now is to get the word out about Sebastian. What would you like our viewers to know about your son? 
Uh, Sebastian, he is high functioning autistic. Um, he loves animals. He loves video games. He loves fishing. Green tea. You're so goofy. <laughs> he's typically a very, very sweet boy. Um, he can be quite temperamental though if he's overstimulated or if he's stressed out. He has a unique run. He runs like the the Naruto anime character. Uh, when he's when he's excited, he likes to to dab and he loves music. He loves to dance. That's all very helpful information. Now, if Sebastian is out there watching, what would you like to say to your son? I would say, Bubba, we love you. We all love you so much. Um, wherever you are, just know that we are not going to stop. We're going to keep searching. We're going to find you. We're going to bring you home. And if you you ever get an opportunity, find a phone, find a safe adult, call 911. Um, but I'd also like to to ask our community to please, please, please keep searching your properties. Keep sharing his flyer. Um, if you know something or you see something, please say something. Call the law enforcement immediately. We're going to do everything we can to help find him. Thank you. Now, let's take a good look at Sebastian. He's 15 years old. Five foot five, 120 pounds, with light brown hair and brown eyes and wears glasses. If you've seen Sebastian or know anything about his disappearance, please call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOSS. That's 1-800-843-5678. And you can also reach out to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation at 1-800-TBI-FIND. Why didn't she say that in the beginning? Why didn't she say that in the beginning? Sebastian, if you're out there, find a phone and stuff. She's been watching, in my opinion. Watching, watching, watching. Watch this. Watch this. Chronicles of Olivia. Love sweet Olivia. All right, let me put her link in the description real quick. One second. One second, y'all, sorry. Okay. Texted you TDOT Memphis camera. Oh, thank you. We'll look at that in just a minute. Questions. Disappearance. Kind of walk through that day. We had a good time. We were laughing. We were joking. Um, he talked to family on the phone during breakfast to brag. Um, we went and picked up our niece. Yes, uh, yeah, I got a call and um, asked if I could go and pick her up, and I did. And so um, we went and did that. We went to BJ's. Um, had a good time there. He ate a colossal popcorn. Um, colossal. Him home to put groceries away because we bought snacks because you know he's 15. Snacks. snacks. Um, we went to the bowling alley and then from there we went to dinner. Came home. Um, he took out the trash because that's his chore. He takes the can to the end of the driveway. Um, now the thing about the snacks. Or not the snacks. See, it's in my head. Snacks. 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 Look, snacks. Because he's 15. Snacks. Um, I'm 
I was gonna say shit. Yeah, you can tell she's she's learning as she's going, which is typical in my opinion. Um, watch how she looks at Chris here, and Chris looks up in the air like, oh yeah, that that did happen. Oh, the trash, the trash. So Seth said he did see the video, but you could, it was like someone had like a hoodie on and they were walking out to the trash. Couldn't tell who it was. About nine o'clock, told him to go to bed. He's come out of his room where he was playing. He said, all right, good night, Mama. Good night, puppies. Love you. And went to bed. Um, he was doing something in his room because about an hour later, I heard some noise. And I was like, I don't care what you're doing in there, but go to sleep. And um, about midnight, I got up. I so if it's 10 o'clock, if it's 10 o'clock, he didn't have a bath. She never said he had a bath, never said anything. Nothing. Nothing happened that evening. He just went to his room. He stayed there. It's 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Now, this one. He was doing something in his room because about an hour later, I heard some noise. And I was like, I don't care what you're doing in there, but go to sleep. That doesn't make sense in there. I don't care what you're doing in there but go to sleep well then obviously you do care what he's doing because he needs to go to sleep that's an oxymoron i don't care what you're doing but go to sleep you would say what are you doing in there you need to be asleep You got school in the morning when you heard a thud. And um, about midnight, I got up and I went to bed. And um, six o'clock, I went to wake him up for school Monday morning. And that's when he went in here. What was going through your mind at that point like what were the feelings that you were feeling to censor myself holy freaking crap this can't be happening where is my kid it it just doesn't sound believable in my opinion when she says to censor myself holy freaking crap where is my kid oh my god justin just made me spit out my coffee with your snacks 15 because you know snacks n-a-u n-a-r naruto n-a-r-u-t-o oh Gotcha. Because she said, oh, because she said he, she said he ran like this. Right. You've seen kids where they walk with their, their arm, you know, they run with their arms backwards. Let's see. Here we go. There they are. They're running with their arms backwards. Naruto runners attack area 51. Okay. She was gone for 45 minutes looking for him who was at the house in case he came back. Nobody. Choice words were used. 
like listen to this this doesn't sound believable I censor myself holy freaking crap this can't be happening where is my kid doesn't have heart in it in my opinion choice words were used um like you know where the f is he you know um i had called my i had looked through the house for him because it was typical for him to get up and come and rummage for snacks and things like that and he likes to dip behind the you know walls and watch you know and um and then he comes out after i come back and he likes to scare me <laughs> But um, after I looked, and I mean, mind you, all of this took place in like one minute flat, but um, I didn't see him in his room. I looked the answer is, you know, what did you think? Chris, plastic toy crane. I, over. I ran through the whole house. I looked out all the doors and windows and I was like hollering his name and um, I picked up the phone and I called my husband and but I just... said, um, I can't find him. And he said, what do you mean? I said, he's not in this effing house. I can't find our son. And, um, I'd like. God, Katie's lost a lot of weight. Look at her here versus now. I jumped in my car and I drove around the neighborhood and I drove over by the school and he's already like I, at this point I was like hysterical and I was crying and I was screaming and uh, Watch. he was like she starts losing it all the doors and windows and I was like hollering his name and um, I picked up the phone and I called my husband and I said um I can't find him. And he said, what do you mean? I said, he's not in this effing house. I can't find our son. And um, I like, I jumped in my car and I drove around the neighborhood and I drove over by the school. And she jumped in her car. She drove around the neighborhood. And then she drove over to the school. She starts losing it. She's getting, in my opinion, she looks like she's getting anxiety. Cue the cough. And he's already, like, I, at this point, I was like. He's already. Did you hear that? I want to remember any of my dreams. And he told me that they put me in the. Really, Deb? Oh my God. Did you hear that? He's already, he's already. Who is he? Let's slow this down so you, because when we're, I know it can be annoying slowed down, but you understand each word better because when we're talking, we're thinking of, we're getting ready. We're thinking of what they're going to say next. Now watch this. I can't find him. And he said, what do you mean? I said, he's not in this effing house. I can't find our son and um i like i jumped in my car and i drove around the neighborhood and i drove over by the school and he's already like I, I, the he's already she's done this he's already And then she stops, right? He's already. At this point, I was like hysterical. And I drove around the neighborhood and I drove over by the school. And 
He's already. Who's he? Like at, at this point, I was like hysterical and I was crying, I was screaming. She wants to let you know that she was hysterical and crying at this point. Of course. Extra information. And uh, <coughs> he was like, um, he was like, see, she did it again. He was like, he was like, again. Is it just me or does it look like she did color her hair? It looks like in the earlier interviews, in the new one, it looks like it has red in it, maybe. I think she's always had a little red in it. Thank you so much, Charcel. I'll look, though. See, he's already calling. She says he's already calling, which meaning Chris. Uh, three-way, he three-way law enforcement and uh, was telling them, like, our son is missing and we don't know what's going on. And he, like, he was like, go back to the house. They're on their way. And okay. Now, this is my, this is my problem with this part. She says, go back to the house. They're on their way. You just said you three-wayed. If you three-wayed, why do you need to know? You already know that they're on their way. Yeah, law enforcement. He three-wayed law enforcement. Why didn't you think he may have went to a neighbor or be hiding under the car again? That's the thing. You're you're on the phone with law enforcement. But she's making it sound like he called her back and said, "Oh, Law enforcement's coming. Get back home. You're on the phone with law enforcement on a three-way call. She called him. He can't three-way. She has to. I ran back to the pool, drove back to the house, and... Um... Law enforcement and um, was telling them, like, our son is missing and we don't know what's going on. And he, like, he was like, go back to the house, they're on their way. And I ran back, well, drove back to the house and, um, Twenty days later, they really found him. Yeah, I can't even imagine how stressful that is, and also, um, like when we were driving up here, like this neighborhood is so pretty and nice, and. Um, do you think, has he ever, like, been, it's just, mm. he doesn't have a history of being no. an eloper, which is common, and I have friends with children on the spectrum who do struggle with elopement with their children but no sebastian that's one thing he's always been a blessing he's not been an eloper or a runner um his, he's not a his, runner or a hider but he 
has hid before primary areas are like social and emotional dysregulation issues and things like that um but he's very smart he's functional um overall he's a pretty happy kid i mean he's he's a teenager he's coming into his hormones he's angry that he's growing a mustache but um for the most part he's a happy kid i've slowed it down so we understand um, better what are your um yeah so we can understand the words um theories like i'm sure your mind is thought of every possible thing that could have happened but is there any theory that you can talk about that you think yes like i said yesterday thought criminal one very simple thing that tells me in my opinion a lot when she called Seth, it wasn't, I know, uh, sorry, when she called Seth, it wasn't, hey, do you have Sebastian? Do you have Sebastian? That's the only other person he goes with. It's, I can't find my son, Sebastian's missing. You would ask? the father do you have our son didn't ask that didn't call seth yes exactly he called chris called or text or something But you would have asked that. He would have asked that. Chris would have said, do you have Sebastian? Or has Sebastian called you? Yes. Exactly. What I can tell you is with all law enforcement. Here's the bullshit. Involved, there's nothing that's been eliminated. Everything is on the table. Everything is being looked at from every possible aspect. He's bullshitting, in my opinion. Uh, he he thinks he's believable. Chris, Tech said, don't be mad. Sebastian is missing. Don't be mad. That's interesting. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. Sounds like you want, you're asking him not to be mad at you. Don't be mad. Sebastian is missing. Oh, yeah, he's using his hands a lot. Fact. Um, Everything from he got out and walked away and was outside of the search radius before we started searching. Now she's now they're giving now they're giving all of the possibilities except for them being suspects themselves. Don't get upset, but Sebastian is missing. You're telling someone not to get upset that their child is missing? Of course you're going to be upset. They're telling exactly what the theories, what or not the theories, that what law enforcement is looking at except for them. You know, if they were innocent, they could have said they've even looked at us. 
right? They've even looked at us. But they don't they don't want to put that out there. Nancy Grace did a video yesterday or day before yesterday. And she said, I it was it's not on this case, but it was another case. And she said, I respect this father so much because he went down to the police station and he said, What do you need from me? What do you need from me? Because I didn't do this. What the hell do you need from me? So you can look for my son and not look for me. Look at me. She said, I respected him so much. So that's exactly what innocent parents should do. What the hell do you want? To the worst, and and that's currently where we're at. I mean, it's yeah. Really trying not to go down that road because well, we're gonna find him. Speculating. Here we go. Here we go. Speculating. Talking about everyone else. Talking, bringing it back to them, right? Bringing it back to them. Everyone's speculating that we did it. I would say you can speculate till the cows freaking come home. I don't give a rat's butt. If you speculate till you're speculated, right? Keep speculating. Find my kid. Misty, thank you so much. My theory is KP over-medicated Sebastian. She ignored the thud. She found him unalive. She picked, she panicked and contacted Chris and he and or his mom and or dad hid Sebastian. Could be. Very possible. Thank you so much, Misty. Darzella, is it just me or does it look like she did. I already read. I already read that, didn't I? I need to bet. <laughs> it causes problems. Thank you, both. Cause issues, and based on facts of what everybody knows, right now there's nothing, and everything is still on the table to be looked at. I just know he's out there somewhere. One other question I have is recently Channel 5 in Nashville, they had security footage that showed two flashlights um, the night he disappeared. Is there anything um, that you think about this video or? Sure. So watch this. There's a lot of speculation about that video that are floating on the internet. Okay. And that is exactly what it is. It's speculations. Now, what it can give you an official statement on is TBI Newslink has released a statement from law enforcement between local law enforcement, state law enforcement, your cracker and knuckle, some federal law enforcement. You hear the knuckles crack? Link has released a statement from Bam. law enforcement between local law enforcement, state law enforcement, some federal law enforcement. No, I missed that. Justin, do you know what Chris said about said to Seth about God? No, what did he say? I missed that. Yeah. He's not a police officer and he cannot give an official answer. Mm hmm. 
She taps the table three times before remembering. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. She's losing it there. Yeah. She's she's losing it. That's what you, you do, like, rhythms, and you're trying to remember. It's an anxiety. Go to church. You might find your son. I would have said you're about to meet God. And they have analyzed that video so many times over that everything that everybody is trying to assume is a flashlight. Um, I hate to say this. It's not. As much as we would love it to be one, it's not. Um, I'm not going to go into details as far as where that video is shot from. But I can tell you, as parents, we have seen the video. Why can't he tell us where it's shot from? I don't understand the first thing like from the law enforcement. We know exactly where it was taken from. And nothing. He knows exactly where it's taken from, but he can't tell us. Why? If it has nothing, this is the thing that drives me nuts about this video, guys. They can say, and Chris says it, the law enforcement says it, everyone says it. I can tell you that I don't know what it is, or or sorry, he'll say, the, the chief says, it has nothing to do with anything but I can't tell you what it is. Chris says it has nothing to do with it, but I can't tell you where it's shot from the video. Why? Why? Being assumed right now is actually true about that video, unfortunately. Okay. And anything about other, any other videos or anything like that, please refer to the TBI news link yeah. that they have out there. They have updated that. Amber Alert stuff, and it will give you the most up to date information that all in, uh, law enforcement has, and they will give you current as far as what's what and how they're looking at things. And if there's any new video, forward it to them. Please. Yeah. Um, security footage is really like a game changer. Um, we're working on Riley's strain and trying to find like if someone missed one on a corner or something. So that's... Uh, around this neighborhood? Yeah. So the house, according to Seth, he said they didn't do any type of forensics or anything. Katie's back living in it. We're at how many days now? Can y'all not hear me? Can y'all not hear me? Can you hear me? You hear me? Okay. Okay. So, no forensics. Katie's back living in the house. She's probably in that interview right now, like, oh, yes. Let's just, you know, spring cleaning, spring cleaning. Um, and this, well, this whole community, I mean, I can tell you that much here when it comes to the cameras. Yep. She's back in the house. One person that has said no. And trust me, it is greatly felt that everybody has been so open, so helpful in pushing out any which way they can. I mean, there's been some families that have actually been on vacation 
that mark home and they got information they got permission chris is in his trailer I keep waiting for Nancy Grace to start calling Chris top stepdad. Cleaning up. From that family to take a look at their cameras and go in their houses without them even being oh, no. present. Oh, no. Um, oh, no. Which has been amazing. So... Mm. Yeah. That's good. Um, if there was something that you could say to Sebastian if he was listening, what would you say? Thank you, Misty. We need a national law when a minor is reported missing. All yes, all family friends must be investigated. All homes treated as a crime scene immediately while searches are being started. This must stop. This ish must stop. I agree. I agree. Totally. Because just like in Summer Wells' case, they didn't do anything. They let him stay in the house till the next didn't start doing the stuff till the next day. Sebastian's Law. Bam. Thank you, Misty, for that, by the way. Thank you so much. But if you can see this or hear this, we just want Watch this. What would you say? Watch immediately. Oh, God. Um, Here comes the deers. But if you can see this or hear this, that we just want you home, baby, and we love you. And um, there ain't nothing going to stop us from coming and getting you and bringing you home. Hmm. I can't speak for his father, but I'm pretty sure we all have the same opinion that we love you, miss you, we want you home. And if you can, call us, get wherever you can, let us know, and we will come get you. We will come get you. Call 911, run out into the street, go in public, anything. The signs that we've been blessed to have family, friends, and even some in the community that have been helping us, but we've been out spreading those as far as we can, even over state lines, um, trying to get awareness because, you know, not everybody knows that he's missing and there's a chance that if someone can see him and not even realize who he is. So we want to get his face out there because we want him home. Surprisingly, even locally, there are some folks that don't yeah. even know what's going on. And it, it's kind of like a shocker. Like, how do you not know? You know, it, it's, it is amazing because in the past couple of weeks, you've got two cases. A 15-year-old boy that has vanished without a trace. You've got a 22-year-old, six foot, four or seven uh, college kid from Missouri who has vanished without a trace. That That's a huge significance here that it's like, wow. That's profound, Chris. It's like, wow.
Ow. <laughs> so. That's scary. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, the, the college kid is from Missouri, I think. Yeah, Missouri. I can only imagine what his family is going through. It's like your worst nightmare come alive. Do you guys perceive heat that, on the internet? Yes, and it's ongoing. It's every single day. Um, yeah. People are people, and they have their opinions. Um, Repel. Everybody is formulating their idea of what's going on. You know what Riley's parents did? They looked for their kid. Like Seth. We had video of Riley. There's no video that we're aware of of Sebastian. Letty, is it Letty? Ladisi? Is that how you do it? Ladisi? Thank you, newish viewer. Love your attitudes. Oh, thank you, my love. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. So sweet of you. Thank you. Welcome. You're always welcome here. Uh, RH Rock Designs became a YouTube member. Thank you so much, my dear. Appreciate you. You're now a pearl. Yes, people are people, says Chris. Chef's kiss. Him saying that made me know Sebastian is early missing. Mm -hmm. I agree. Who's guilty and who's not guilty? Because they want to know. Or they feel they need to know. Yes. There's a difference. Unfortunately, what I will tell you is that when you're the family in this position and you're working with law enforcement mm -hmm. and everything's going the way it goes, mm -hmm. people automatically assume this parent or that parent and in this situation, I can promise you. Here we go. Every single parent has been vetted. Uh huh. I can't go into details, but I can tell you we have been vetted. Uh huh. And we have been cleared. Oh. Vetted. Uh huh. He's been vetted and he has been cleared. They, we, have been vetted and cleared. Maybe in his mind. Um, of mm. all possibility of wrongdoing, oh. foul play, there's mm. nothing mm -hmm. to that. Nothing to it. We have been vetted. We have been vetted. He says it twice. We have been cleared of any possible foul play or wrongdoing. There's nothing to it. I would have said, you know what? Kiss my screen door. Kiss my screen door. I don't care. Don't care if you think I did it or not. Find my kid. Help me find my kid. You don't have to like me. You don't have to love me. Right? Kiss my screen door. Help me find my kid. That's all I need. Law enforcement's doing what they're going to do. I need some help up in here. Right? 
<laughs> you like um, the screen door comment. <laughs> we've heard all kinds of stories. I pretty much don't even go online anymore at this point. I, on the other hand, I do go on. Yeah, and I do now. talk to these folks. And I want them to understand. Tell them. They have this formulated opinion. Mm -hmm. Based on? You. On who we are. Not who we truly are. They've never met us. We've never been, we've never crossed paths with some of these folks. But I have told them all online, if you want to know, just ask me. Chris, drop in your link. I want to know. Here you go, Chris. Drop in a link. I want to know. I wanted to know the other day or a couple weeks ago. would not take an interview with me. You said you would. But you said TBI said you couldn't do any more interviews. Katie just got off of an interview less than an hour ago. Translation, ladies, I'm still available for communication, but my wife has me where she wants me right now so this is how we talk now i'm trying to think has he done any interviews with the mail has he done any interviews with the mail i told him start with me i'm a girly boy Start with me. Work your way up. Women only. Yeah. Damn you, Chris. Yeah, he's into it. Look at him, his face right there. Stop, I can't breathe. <laughs> I'll answer your questions to the best of what I can. There are some things that I cannot give you because law enforcement has dictated that we are not to provide certain information. But I will try. I am direct, I am brash, but I am very respectful. I would have loved to hear him. I would have I would have shelled out money to Nancy Grace herself if if Chris would have said that Nancy, I am direct. I am brash, but I am very respectful. He was like, Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I saw, so sorry. Sorry, Nancy. So, so sorry, Nancy. I, I didn't know. Didn't know. So we got to have, we got to come up with a plan. You got co co consequences. You forgot your baby belt. So, if you have questions, ask. I'll give you what I can. Just be respectful, please. And keep in mind, there's three parents and there's thousands and millions of people out there that may have a question. <laughs> I am, we are trying to get to them. I promise you. Thank you. He loves himself so much. He loves himself. Oh my God, this man loves himself. <laughs> We're trying. 
<laughs> we really are. There's one of there is one Seth and two sitting in a trailer park. That's what there is. There's one Seth and he is getting to everyone he can. Taking his health is taking a beating mentally, physically, and emotionally. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all there is, folks. He's trying to not answer any question he means. He misspoke. <laughs> How has your guys' life been affected by the, like, I know that's a broad question, but what's, like, when you wake up in the morning, what's it just like? Miserable, to be honest with you. Think of it like this. You wake up every morning and your routine is what it is and you know it, right? Now wake up. When this happens, and you can't figure out what to do. Right? Right, Mohawk? Where was that? Thousands of millions of people. Thousands of millions. Like he has searched fives of tens of minutes. Fives of tens of minutes. Searching. Fives of tens of minutes. in 40 some days. You struggle every single day on trying to get out of the bed, to deal and face everybody's negativity, you know, and you try to make it a positive thing the fact that my son's still not home. Face the negativity. He walked half a mile to the pond. Yeah. We have a bedroom that's empty that is never normally ever empty. Except you know what? He said never. And then he said normally empty. What did you think? What do you think he was going to say there? And then he caught himself. We have a bedroom there that is never normally empty. What do you think he was going to say there? You think he was going to say something else? Anyone? And he doesn't touch or comfort her. There you. Yep. La I agree. Thank you for that. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. We have a bedroom that's empty that is never normally ever empty, except for when he's with his dad every other weekend. So now we have a child that's missing. So there's no words to describe it, but I can just tell you it's like you get up and now you don't know what to do. Sebastian's parents also talked about how his actions and behaviors could be different or how he would respond in a new environment. Well, that was, yep. that's kind of tricky because <laughs> Sebastian hasn't been on his medication in 20 days. So he is rambunctious. He he's gonna be hungry. He will. He, he turns into a bottomless pit. I mean, he, he's your teenage boy, you know. Always hungry. They talk about food and snacks a lot. They really do. 
They talk about food and snacks a lot. You notice that? Remember the camera? Seeing him sneak in the kitchen. Getting snacks. Um, on the spectrum, yes, but not one autistic child in this world is like another one. What we can tell you is he's, he's smart. He can be goofy. Um, he kind of has issues with personal space. He hasn't mastered he can be a, <laughs> up in your face kind of kid. He's <laughs> he can be aggressive if he's upset. Yeah. He's emotional. He's a teenager. He's got, he doesn't like punch and hit and throw, but he no. gets really like aggressive stance or like clipped where he just won't talk to you or um, you know, if he's really upset, he like growls. Yeah, he. Uh, <laughs> look. Be vigilant. You know, and we don't expect everybody to stop what they do and spend every waking minute. But you would be surprised on how easily people are complacent and not realize certain things. Thank we're you. all guilty because we're all human. We all live a daily life. But sometimes just being a little bit extra vigilant. Aware of your surroundings in case there's something suspicious. You never know. But don't ever stop is all we ask. Please keep looking, keep searching. Um, anything, reach out. You know, doesn't matter. She does. Yeah, we're going to definitely... Um you know, keep his story in the spotlight. And all it takes is for one person to see something or know something. And that's just that one clue. The old saying, see something, say something. And a few others, but we're working with everyone we can. And take in like some people have been kind and reached out with resources that I didn't know were out there and I've reached out to all of them. Um, truckers against trafficking. We reached out to them just in case. Biker world. That's one thing everybody has in common is their love for a child and they can't stand to see children missing hurts and it didn't matter who it is it doesn't matter what group group it is that's one commonality between every group and that's why as a as a part of being in that world we go and we utilize our brothers and sisters to help spread that word. i did a side by side i'll show you guys you'd be surprised on how easy it is to spot somebody it's talking in circles this this the biker so poor seth i bet you he's lost a ton of weight too working his butt off There you go. You think she's lost?
Oh, I think she's lost weight. Some of you are saying no. Most of you are saying no. Let's see here. Let me see if I can get a front angle. There's a front angle of here on Chronicles. Let me see if I can do that. When she looks at... Let me see here. Okay, here we go. Here's a front angle. Her face still looks red and puffy. I think she's lost weight. She's gotten some sun. She's only 34. I can't remember. Someone says she's 34. I thought she's older than that. How old is she again? She's been vacationing. Damn. I think Chris is 41 or 42. Her upper lip is different. Well, she's talking. There. Stress will do it. I mean, regardless of what you think, she's stressed. Thirty-four. Drinking and regret equals weight loss. I think she looks early forties. Early forties. I mean, I think she's lost weight. I think it's fair. She looks more puffy. In the Olivia interview. Apple red guy lost a ton of weight. What's apple red guy? Yeah, the neck area. I mean, even like her forehead, you know, she just looks, the nose area. Daily, what are you doing? Oh, thank you, Gypsy Mama. When Chris referred to R Riley and said, I can only imagine it's because he doesn't feel a loss. Wow. Thank you for that, my dear.
Thank you, that. Thank you, Daily, for becoming a member. Welcome. You're always buying memberships. <laughs> Lady C, thank you so much, my love. Appreciate you. Thank you, my love. Did she give an interview tonight? Yeah, we'll watch it. We'll watch it again. Sure thing. Your help to find a missing Tennessee teenager. During the early morning hours of February 26, 2024, 15-year-old Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers disappeared from his home in Hendersonville, Tennessee. That's about 20 miles north of Nashville. He's not been seen or heard from since. And Sebastian is now the subject of an Amber Alert. Joining us now is Sebastian's mom, Katie Proudfoot. Katie, thanks for being with us under what must be very difficult circumstances. First of all, how are you and your family holding up? Um, I would say that this isn't a tragedy that we would wish anyone to ever experience. Uh, we are, we're keeping our faith and we're praying every day that we're going to find Sebastian. What's the latest on the search? So law enforcement is exploring any and all possibilities. Um, they're communicating daily with us about updates and the statuses. We, we have faith that all the law enforcement agencies involved are doing everything that they can. Um, and we're going to find Sebastian and bring him home. We know the most important thing right now is to get the word out about Sebastian. What would you like our viewers to know about your son? Uh, Sebastian, he is high functioning autistic. Um, he loves animals. He loves video games. He loves fishing. Green tea. You're so goofy. <laughs> He's typically a very, very sweet boy. Um, he can be quite temperamental though if he's overstimulated or if he's stressed out. He has a unique run. He runs like the, the Naruto anime character. Uh, when, he's, when he's excited, he likes to, to dab and he loves music. He loves to dance. That's all very helpful information. Oh, now, if dance. Sebastian is out there watching, what would you that's all very helpful information. Hold on. When he's when he's excited, he likes to to dab and he loves music. He loves to dance. 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 Snacks and dance. Listen. When he's when he's excited, he likes to to dab and he loves music. He loves to dance. And he loves music. He loves to dance. Music. He loves to dance music he loves to dance his 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 music he loves to dance that's all very helpful information now if sebastian is out there watching what would you like to say to your son i would say bubba we love you we all love you so much um dance wherever you are just know that we are not going to stop we're gonna keep searching, we're gonna find you, we're gonna bring you home. And if you, you ever get an opportunity, find a phone, find a safe adult, call 911. Um, but I'd also like to, to ask our community to please, please, please keep searching your properties. Keep sharing his flyer. Um, if you know something or you see something, please say something, call the law enforcement immediately. We're going to do everything we can to help find him. Katie should have never got with this dude. She should have never got with this dude. My opinion. Just never should have. Lady C, thank you so much for becoming a member, my dear. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my love. Appreciate you. Welcome to the family. You are now a pearl. And so are you, Gypsy Mama. My voice is leaving, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, my love. Welcome to the family. You're now a pearl. Oh, my God, Daily. Thank you so much for gifting five memberships. You're always buying memberships, my dear. And you didn't even have yourself one. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Appreciate you. But, you know, we're going to need an application process. This is a Brooklyn-bound 2 express train. The next Get stop the is train. Fulton Street. 
Stand clear of the closing doors, please. My body aches to be satisfied My weakness comes and goes My weakness comes and goes You five are approved. Welcome to the family. Thank you so much. If you received one of those memberships, please thank our sweet mod daily our mods work very hard here i think we have the absolute world's best mods uh for sure for sure approved approved thank you again daily i do written in the stars it is a blessing i have the best people the best best people I know you did it. It said you became a member earlier, so I was like, you're always buying memberships. Um, am I the only one who thinks this interview wasn't live? For example, it's almost as if she was given a paper and questions, then recorded herself answering this question. Um, if you ever get an opportunity, find a phone, find a safe adult, call 911. Well, what I think it was. This is what I think it was. So, yes, please hit the like button. Uh, five interviews, not one tier. So what I think this was is the, uh, this was, they did an interview earlier and they clipped it is what they did they clipped it and then it's on a live show but the interview wasn't live snacks or snakes snacks love you too miss daily She's 100% reading off script. Well, I'll tell you with the Nancy Grace interview, it was like, you know, they were like looking down. Yeah. Was that, how am I trying? Let's see here. Thank you, Thrift Mama. Thank you so much. I don't know. It's. I just hope. You know what I hope? I hope. That. Well, obviously, Sebastian has found number one. But. Until he's found, TBI, in my opinion. needs to clear or name some suspects. Help the public out. The public is what helps them. Right? That's what the public does. The public helps them. She just labeled her son as a high functioning autistic. Like, I think they should be interviewed by Chris from the interview room. Um, well, I tried to, I gave, uh, I talked to Josh and I said, uh, you know, see if we can do that and talk to Chris about it. And he said he would do it, but he didn't do it. He will not do it with a man. And when I mean it, I mean an interview. Uh, just like the Gabby Petito case, the public help. 
Yes. I would. I wish they would, uh, Justin, but you know how backwards they are. Yeah, they won't do anything. Can you show the pickup Sebastian in the long sleeve brown shirt? He looks more mature in that photo smiley link. Yep, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Here we go. I guess um, Chris is there by himself. He said it was, what, three days ago? On the... I don't see it. Page down. I don't see it. This is two days ago. God, Smiley posts a lot on her community. I'm glad Dylan Rounds was found. God bless him. I don't see it. They joke the way he dance, yes. He hasn't answered the deception detective either. Go figure. Oh, he's not going to answer. Chris is probably not going to do another interview, period. I don't e I'm surprised she did an interview, but she probably knew it was just going to be a very, not really asking them questions, just letting her talk what she wanted to talk. If he is by himself, where's Katie? Katie's at her house. Yeah, I don't either, Brendan's. All missing and murder cases are already sad enough, but when they have someone like poor Sebastian, it just hits me differently. They did Fox and Friends after Nancy. Did they ever figure out why Riley didn't have water in his lungs? Um, they said something big was coming out about Riley, but I haven't seen anything. Uh, when Katie said, check your properties, all I could do is think was, okay, so he's not on someone's property. It's a good point. Good point. Let's watch it once more. She's reading something just beneath the camera. Hendersonville, Tennessee. That's about 20 miles north of Nashville. He's not been seen or heard from since. And Sebastian is now the subject of an Amber Alert. Joining us now is Sebastian's mom, Katie Proudfoot. Katie, thanks for being with us under what must be very difficult circumstances. First of all, how are you and your family holding up? Um, I would say that this isn't a tragedy that we would wish anyone to ever experience. Uh, we are, we're keeping our faith and we're praying every day that we're going to find Sebastian. What's the latest on the search? 
So law enforcement is exploring any and all possibilities. Um, they're communicating daily with us about updates and the statuses. We, we have faith that all the law enforcement agencies involved are doing everything that they can. Um, and we're going to find Sebastian and bring him home. We know the most important thing right now is to get the word out about Sebastian. What would you like our viewers to know about your son? Uh, Sebastian, he is high functioning autistic. Um, he loves animals. He loves video games. He loves fishing. Green tea. You're so goofy. <laughs> it was just a little very, bit ago. Very sweet boy. Um, he can be quite temperamental though if he's overstimulated or if he's stressed out. He has a unique run. He runs like the the Naruto anime character. Uh, when he's when he's excited, he likes to to dab and he loves music. He loves to dance. That's all very helpful information. Dance. Now, if Sebastian is out there watching, what would you like to say to your son? Does anyone notice how her voice changes? Sometimes it's very much more Appalachian. Sometimes it's different. Weird how she changes. I would say, Bubba, we love you. We all love you so much. Um, wherever you are, just know that we are not going to stop. We're going to keep searching. We're going to find you. We're going to bring you home. And if you, you ever get an opportunity, find a phone. Find a safe adult, call 911. Um, but I'd also like to, to ask our community to please, please, please keep searching your properties. Keep sharing his flyer. Um, if you know something or you see something, please say something. Call the law enforcement immediately. We're going to do everything we can to help find him. Thank you. Now, let's take a good look at Sebastian. He's 15 years old, five foot five, 120 pounds, with light brown hair and brown eyes and wears glasses. If you've seen Sebastian or know anything about his disappearance, please call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST. That's 1-800-843-5678. And you can also reach out to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation at 1-800-TBI-FIND. Um, very interesting. Very interesting. Um, I don't know. I'm not saying her speech isn't off, just saying. Yeah. She was my next door neighbor in Michigan. Katie was? Katie was your next door neighbor? You're saying Katie was your next door neighbor? That's interesting. I mean, I don't see how in the world how in the world where'd that come go? I lived this across the street from her Constance and her sister. Oh really? That's very interesting. And Leslie, her daughter. You want to call in? You're welcome to call in. No pressure. I don't want to pressure you or anything, but you're welcome to call in. You don't got a text. I don't want to pressure you or anything, but we'd love to hear from you. Daily, thank you so much for gifting one membership. Eric was friends with TJ Outlaw Chris. How could your you bag your son like that? Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome to call in. 
<coughs> Share my phone's on. There we go. Um, she said she'll call in. Great. One of Katie's neighbors. Here. Old neighbors, rather. Joe's Ryan, Chris, everyone's from Forest Park. So are we supposed to identify him by the way he runs? I don't watch anime. The number is all right here on the screen. Um, I don't see, I do not see how... Um, how does a child go missing from Chris said 1230 to 6 a.m. not Not um, a sign of him, not a scent of him. No shoes. You know why I think? Yeah, we see Princess Darling. We see you, babe. Yep, phone line's on. If she wants to call in, it's not muted, no. Um, you know why I think he doesn't have shoes on? Because I think something happened to him inside the house before he went to bed. YouTuber Justin Black Mom wants you to know she, T-E. Okay. Why'd you give me the middle finger? <laughs> um, how does he go missing with no signs, no scent, no footprints, no clothing? Yeah. I think all of his shoes were accounted for, maybe. All of his shoes were accounted for. That means he would have to have been barefooted. See, Leah, if you want to call in, numbers on the screen. Sorry, meant the pointing finger. <laughs> I think it's maybe a troll, maybe. People just don't vanish into thin air, for goodness sakes. No, they don't. They don't just vanish into thin air. He didn't talk to anybody. Oh. Okay. 
Yes, Daily, you're live. Hi there. Hi. I'm sorry my voice is a little, I've been sick, so you got to bear with me. <laughs> no, I'm not saying, okay. no, no RH you? rocking, I'm not saying, I'm not okay. saying you're a troll, sorry. Um, not you, Daily, I was talking to someone. Oh, oh. What's up? Hey, can you turn okay. off the background noise? Yeah. Is it better? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. This is the deal. This is my two theories. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. One, if there's no sense and there's all this stuff and they're not talking and all this stuff, how can he just disappear and they don't talk or anything like that? All right. How can they just all of a sudden start talking? I think they lawyered up or someone is like telling them not to talk. That's weird. Don't you agree? Oh, I don't think anybody's telling them not to talk. I think they just know that they're digging themselves deeper. But they seem like they're reading the script. When they talk, they seem like. Oh, I like think they got. I think they got. A story and they're sticking to it. I, I I think some they seem legally. I know lawyers. They seem like they're legally reading something. They they they're too much to a script. Like they they're not leaking. And okay okay. So then here's my second thing. Mm -hmm. Something tells me like he was in the garage or something like that. Or if they, he did come home, I don't think he did come home. I think something, they went straight to the trailer. I think the guy was home. My opinion only, remember this disclosure, I think, I think that Chris was never working. My opinion only. I think that, I don't know, people can think I'm wrong or whatever. I think Chris was, you know, around or something. I don't know. Something just, I got a gut feeling. Something went wrong. If he got hurt, I don't understand. I, I just think something went wrong that night. Mm -hmm. You know, I I just, all the things I put together, it doesn't make sure, no shoes, no scent. You know, it just, you know, he was supposed to get custody, you know, stuff is supposed to get custody. It just something is off. There's something there. There's one piece of puzzle we do not know. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. He was supposed to go to that school. He was lined up for the. I mean, I've got a whole timeline. You know that timeline I told you to look at? Mm -hmm. How come we never went through that? We will. We will. We'll go through okay. it. Because that is so important. Because there's things mentioned in that of that phone call. If you listen to it, mm -hmm. yeah. really, and that's what I would love. I mean, it's so important because there's things in there that tell a story. Mm -hmm. I've got this all mapped out on a piece of paper, and I'm like, it shows so many things. Did he get hurt? Are they hiding something? I don't know. She looks like, you know, why is she talking now? Mm-hmm. Right? Well, hopefully they find him. Somebody needs... I think, I do think he's alive. I don't think, I think he is somewhere. I uh, don't think he's... I hope you're right, but I, I don't. A lot of people don't, you know, I don't know. I pray to God in heaven he is. You, you know, I believe in faith, so I'm a very, I just believe in faith. I know a lot of people don't believe it. I know the 72-hour thing because my dad was a police officer, and, he, you know, they, he did water patrol even and stuff like that, and they said 72 hours. You know, that's a real major thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I know it is. But I'll tell you, they found people and 
if they lost consciousness and they don't remember who they are and found them later and they just don't know who they are. It's possible. You got, you know, anything's possible. You know, but mm. the cold and stuff, someone could have took him in and you don't remember who he is. With the autism, anything can happen. Because mm-hmm. my brother is autism and, you know, you, you, some things can happen. You understand? So that's just my thought. And I thought I'd let you know. Thank you, my dear. You're welcome, my hon. And you have a great night. And you I'll too. talk to you on chat. All right, honey. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Talk All right. to you later. All right. Bye-bye. Hi to everybody. It All was right. nice talking to everybody. Bye-bye. Sweetheart. Bye-bye. Bye, honey. It's our sweet daily. It's possible, but statistics, yeah. Yep. Not so good. Not so good. Y'all, I was planning to be here 10 minutes, and it is three hours and 16 minutes later. Did it again. <laughs> That's okay. I, I love talking to y'all. So, Brandy Gray really haven't heard that. What did Brandy say? What did Brandy say? What did Brandy say? Randy, he says a dog tract is sent to their back door twice. Chris says that. Yeah, we, I love you. I love every one of you. And wouldn't someone report a found person? Yeah, I would think so. Jesse, my opinion. It keeps us up at night, Sea Star. Keeps us up at night. The man with the snakes is a snake. Green eyes, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. The serpent with the serpent. Oh, thank you, Snicker Doodles. Yeah, lots of stuff is going down in Israel right now, in Iran. Things are crazy in the world. Out through garage, maybe. Well, if he went out through the garage, he would have had to go all the way through the house, past Katie's and Chris's bedroom. Yes. And... That would make it look even worse. Of course, free falling. Thank you for being here. I bet Sebastian feels the same way. Snake man and sneaky snake. Oh, thank you, Fox Lady. Thank you, love. Appreciate you. I know another autistic boy, 16 years old, just went missing five days ago, Arizona. And There's a there's another autistic child that was unalived by the parents, by the mother as well. Yeah, we covered Israel early. I sound like Aunt Sherry. Thanks. Thanks off. Thanks. Where's my, where's my helmet? A storm is coming. Um, that's right. We're never going to give up. If he took off running in the neighborhood, wouldn't the dogs in the hood be barking like crazy? Mm-hmm. Where is your Bud Light? I don't, I don't, God, I'm crazy enough without drinking. I haven't had alcohol since 1976, probably. It's been that long. Well, thank you, Grandma. Thank you so much. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Appreciate you. 
did they ever find the boy that was at church? I'm not sure about that story, my dear. Oh, gotcha. Aunt Jerry drinks Bud Light. And uh, Aunt Jerry, and she has her aquarium. In her aquarium. Thank you, Daily. Thank you, my dear, for gifting another membership. Yeah, I don't do either, but hey, if it works for you, it works for me. Can we see the brown fits in the wells for emotional trauma? It's America. And Sherry has a portable aquarium, yeah. Yeah, it's the Platinum. She drinks Bud Light Platinum. Weren't you both in 76? Yes. What do you think about the landfill next to the Bower Sox Proudfoot business? Yeah. If I had time, I'd bring my boy Dave down. Yeah. Weren't you born in 76? No. Was a happy hour at Studio 54. God, I know. I wish. All right, guys. Good night. Get some rest. God bless each and every one of you. If you pray, pray for Sebastian. Pray for Summer. Pray for Uncle Mike. Michael Monkey Bond, uh, pray for the world. Send good vibes to one another. The world needs it. The world needs it. I'll see you guys tomorrow, Lord willing. Good night. God bless.